Now, some have asked, what are we looking at before we can consider easing of the measures? Uh, broadly speaking, we look at three areas. Number one, the rate of increase in infection numbers every day, because that rate of increase will impact on demand for healthcare services. Second, the proportion of infection cases that fall seriously ill, because these are the ones who need to be hospitalised and will likely need oxygen supplementation or ICU care. And thirdly, as a consequence of the second, we look at occupancy rates in our hospitals, especially in our ICU facilities. In fact, we intend to update our daily reports soon with some of these indicators so that the public will be able to see the same indicators that we are monitoring closely. Now, zooming in on these three broad areas, one key indicator that we are watching closely is the weekly infection rate. That's the ratio of cases in the past week over the week before. In some ways, it's a very crude measure of what the epidemiologists call the reproduction rate, or R. Right? But we are using a crude measure of it by measuring the ratio of cases in the past week over the week before. This rate, you, this ratio used to be 1.5, which suggested that cases were doubling every week or so. It's now come down to just above 1. And that means that cases are still increasing, but at a slower rate. But because cases are still increasing, it's still resulting in pressures on our healthcare system. We monitor this ratio closely, and if the ratio comes below 1, and our hospital and ICU situation remains stable, we will make some calibrated easing in three areas. One, uh, we are looking at allowing team sports to resume. For example, five, and a, you know, a group of five people can play football with another group of five people or any other contact sports. Second, we will look at resuming more activities in our schools and institutions of higher learning. And thirdly, we will allow family members from the same household to dine together in F&B establishments uh, up to a group of five persons. Uh, these are calibrated moves where we assess the risk to be acceptable. For example, with Activities in schools, IHLs, many of these activities are masked up, so we think the risks are acceptable. Where sports are concerned, they do not have their mask on, and there are you know, people interacting closely together, especially with contact sports, but we can mitigate the risk by requiring the participants to do an ART test, antigen rapid test, before participating in the activity. And for dining, again, it's high risk, but because the people coming to dine together are from the house, same household, the risk can be mitigated, but then it's an issue of enforcement. How do we go around ensuring that across all f &B outlets, this rule is complied with strictly and it's only people from the same household? So that's something that we are looking at. But potentially, these are the three Next um, batch of easing moves we are looking at, subject to the conditions I just highlighted.